Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another track guide on Gran Turismo 7. We're back with the manufacturer's guide. Now this lap was done pre-update. However, in terms of braking references, everything is identical. However, the Mercedes has had a little bit of a nerf. Now luckily, on the soft tyres, the nerf isn't as bad when tyre wear is off. So in terms of qualifying, I think the lap time should be attainable still with this guide. However, in race pace, I want to let everyone know that this Mercedes is going to be very, very difficult because the medium and hard tyres, when we've tested it, it's around, it's at least half a second a lap slower than what it was before with the new update than what it was yesterday. So factor that in, strategy for this race is all over the place because uh, you're going to have to do a lot of tyre saving to make this a one-stop race. I think with the Mercedes, you might be able to get nine laps out the hard tyres. Six laps isn't an issue. But you might have to try and do maybe 8.7 or 9.6. If you, It might be advisable to go for the 8.7 because it looked like the mediums might have lasted a bit better with the lower fuel. So yeah, loads of factors to work out. Hopefully this will help you out though in terms of finding some pace here. It's not an amazingly fast lap. It's just a basic guide to give you some tips and hopefully find you some pace in pretty much the majority of cars because the braking references are all going to be fairly close. So let's get this underway. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hit that like button. It helps push the channel. And let me know in the comment section if this has still helped you out. I'm really, I really hope it does. So working our way down into turn one. First thing we're going to be looking for is the 100 ball. We've got Baptist's ghost in front of us, fastest in the world. There you go. There's a 100 ball there and we're breaking just fractionally short of that 100 ball. So basically dead on that 100 ball. Now we're gonna use a blue bit of tarmac on the right for more rotation into the corner. And we're gonna go down to second gear. You can see the line that we're gonna take, getting our left-hand tire extremely close to the curb. So as we come off the brakes, left-hand tire, as soon as we're basically skimming that curb we're on the throttle and aggressively on the throttle. Now use a bit of the curb here to rotate the car into the right. You see Baptist do that. That's gonna help us rotate now into this next left-hand corner. So you can see, I give a little lift off the throttle at this point. Just helps with rotation, gets that left hand tire onto the curb, enables you to get back on the throttle nice and early and carry the speed all the way to the next braking zone. Now you're going to use this little bit of a gap in the barriers just after it changes to the red there. You can see onto the brakes pretty much on that gap there. Now we're going to be rotating into this left hand corner. You're going to actually let the car coast in. So you're going to trail brake off the brakes and then just let the car do some coasting. You see completely coasting at this point, then back onto the throttle right on the middle of the apex there and get the exit speed out the exit and into this next right hand corner. This is a tricky right hand corner. You're gonna see Baptist take a much tighter line than what I do and gain a lot on me. So braking, very, pretty much as soon as you see the curb in that circle, you're on the brakes and you're gonna see, look at Baptist's line there, getting the car all the way onto the curb. I miss that curb, just about hit the apex at the end of it, lose a tenth or two there, just on one corner. So that corner's vital, you try and get it in on the apex. It'll gain you a lot of time. I remember that from GT Sport all also, so yeah. Get it on that apex. Now into the next braking zone, you're going to use that 100 board and the start of the um, the bit of sand on the left, but you're going to break just short of it. So braking a little bit short of that point there, you can see brakes going on nice and early, and you're going to be getting the car over to the left-hand side using that blue bit of um, tarmac again, left-hand tire on that and rotating it in. So now the aim of this corner is as much exit speed up the hill as possible. So you're taking the wide line in, come off the brakes, then on the power extremely early. You can see as our right-hand tire is close to the curb, we're getting on that power and try and keep the steering inputs nice and smooth at this point because the car wants to become unsettled with that change of direction. So powering our way up the hill, you're going to use that change of colour on the barriers as the right as kind of a reference for your braking point. You see, just as we're coming up to that, onto the brakes. And again, this corner is all about widening that line in and getting the power down as early as possible and getting as much exit speed as you can see. You can see Baptist's line there, really carrying a lot of speed through the corner and that's gonna make you so much faster all the way up this uphill section. Now, power down fully all the way up here and then as we're coming into this corner, you wanna take quite a little bit of a wide line. You wanna try and get the car out as much as you can without understeering. So use a wide entry like Baptist in front of us there. And then just a little lift off the throttle. You can see I come off the throttle here. What that's gonna do is gonna get the left-hand tire as close to the curb as possible. You see, skimming the curb, and that enables you to get on the throttle for the exit here, all the way up to the curb. And then we're coming up to the final and probably one of the most important corners for your lap. You can see taking quite a wide line in, getting on the brakes nice and early. Go down to third gear. Now you want to get on the throttle super early. And what I make it, I make a little area here. I hit too much of the curb, unsettles the car a little bit, 
and then I can't get on the throttle as much. So I possibly lose a tenth or possibly two tenths on that one corner alone. But not too bad. Powering our way down to the straight now, and we still get over the line for a 1 minute 16.8. Now, there is potential to probably to get a 16.5 at least for myself, but I think for a basic track guide, this should do you reasonable in terms of telling you where to find the pace. So again, watching that lap from the chase camera, you can see 100 board using the full width. Look how much of the track we use for the rotation of the car. And on the power nice and early, using again as much of the track as possible. Again, swinging this car, it's all about trying to get the rotation into these corners. This track is a very nice flowing track. I quite enjoy it. And I am a little bit disappointed that the, B that the car, it hasn't been BOP. What I think's happened is the physics change on this car has just affected the way it performs. So into this right hand corner, you can see how much I missed the curve there, but I get on the apex quite late. So I do actually hit a late apex, which maybe loses me a 10 from the 10 from the half. But again, powering our way down here and then into the next braking zone. You can see on that brakes before the 100 boards, use the full width for track again and on that throttle for the uphill section. You see the rear wants to step out there, but we managed to save that. And then again, use the full width for track on the right hand side to rotate it into this left hand side and then power your way up this hill into this tricky little section here. It's a little lift off the throttle, then back on the throttle and then into that final corner, which again, we say, you know, this corner, if you can get this right and get on the throttle nice and early and carry as much momentum through this part as possible, you can gain a lot. But yeah, I think the BOP hasn't changed on this car. What I think's changed is the new physics are affecting the Mercedes a little bit more than some other cars because the majority of cars have not lost that much pace. But Mercedes, unfortunately, in race pace on medium and hard tyres has lost quite a bit of time. So yeah, in terms of the race, you're going to want to probably start on them hard tyres. You really need to do a lot of tyre saving. Get your laps to lap nine. Get in the pits with completely dead tyres. Get the mediums on. Mediums should be able to do six just about before they completely die. So that is the strategy. I think that's going to be the strategy for most cars as well. Nine, six. Um, I don't think many cars are going to make it to 10 on the hard hard tyres. I don't think so anyway. But yeah, hopefully it's helped you out. Let me know in the comment section. I'll be seeing you for more videos and live streams in the future. Thanks again for watching, everyone.